Whoa, good sharp turn there. Yeah, it's programmed to be aggressive. The helicopter we're in is older than I am, but the technology, this is as cutting edge as it gets for helicopters. This thing is flying itself. We're entering aviation's next era, autonomous flight. It's a robot that's connected to the controls. Exactly. Planes, helicopters, drones, making decisions on their own. And you don't think a pilot could do it better? Just like in playing chess, the robot will do it better. A fierce competition is underway to achieve safe, autonomous flight. It's a race, right? Absolutely, it's a, a race. Ra a race bet. to what? Who owns the skies 50 years from now? Military powers are embracing this technology, revolutionizing combat. Flying robots could be fighting each other in the sky, raising fears that this tech could fall into the wrong hands. I imagine there are terrorists who would love to have this technology. Yes. Does that worry you? It worries me a lot. On the horizon, autonomous flight and fight. The military worked with Aurora Flight Sciences, a subsidiary of Boeing, to build a fully autonomous system for helicopters that'll potentially be deployed in war zones. The way this is designed to work is that there's Marines in the field needing resupply, and there's a tablet that those Marines would have with them. So like maybe they need food and water for the next couple days and some bullets. And so they would put that request in through the tablet. In this case, Aurora allowed me to activate the helicopter's mission. And we're going. We're the first journalists who get to experience an autonomous flight in this helicopter. You're not touching it. Hands free, look on, no hands. That's right. This helicopter can fly itself without any humans needing to steer it. Because the technology is still in its pilot phase, there's a human pilot on board, just in case. Whoa, that was some sharp turning. What was that about? It was just the wind coming through at a weird angle as it was making the turn. We'll go aggressively back in the other direction. The helicopter uses lasers, other sensors, and algorithms to plan its trajectory from one GPS point to another, avoiding obstacles as narrow as telephone wires. In complex terrain, it chooses for itself the best place to land. So it's going to point the nose into the wind, and then it'll do the vertical landing. Suddenly, the pilot grabs the controls and takes over. The robot did everything right, but... So it was trying to take us over to the runway. But I like to stay clear of the runway in case any airplanes come in, so I'm just going to manually put it here. Then the computer took over again. As a test, a plastic case is placed on the ground in the landing zone you've selected. The laser radar sees it and picks another place to set down. How many of these flights have you done at this point? Uh, fully autonomous like that, I'd say we're on about flight 50. So this is the ACUS helicopter, called the AEH-1. John Langford is Aurora's CEO. He says the Navy invested $100 million into the autonomous helicopter technology. In a situation like Iraq or Afghanistan, the IEDs made it so dangerous to drive on the roads that they were looking at ways to take people off the roads and move them through the air uh, autonomously. Since 2006, roughly half of all U.S. military casualties in Iraq and Afghanistan were caused by improvised explosive devices, or IEDs. Aiming to reduce these numbers in the future, the military is working on autonomous transportation of supplies through the air. If it gets shot down, it's a lot of money, but you're not losing a human life if it gets shot down. You can take that risk. It changes the calculus of what you're willing to do. You're going to do things that are more dangerous that you might not do with humans on board the system, but that's part of what the robots are all about. Aurora has already developed a conventional airplane that can taxi, take off, and land without a pilot. When you look at a modern airplane, the weakest link in the system is the flesh and blood sitting up there. It's the G limit, it's you know how tight can you turn? A lot of what we're trying to do here is to put humans in the place where humans are best, and machines in the place where the machines are best. The Air Force is saying we are soon going to be in a place where manned platforms, manned aircraft, will go the way of the Goonie Bird. 
Bob Work was the Deputy Secretary of Defense from 2014 to 2017. They'll be replaced by completely unmanned or autonomous fighter planes. While Boeing is taking the pilot out of the cockpit, the military is also funding research into autonomous drones that could replace troops on the ground. Many military drones have a pilot behind them, but not this one. It's being developed at the University of Pennsylvania with funding from the U.S. Department of Defense's research arm, DARPA. To develop drones small enough to navigate buildings on their own. We're the first journalist to see UPenn's self-guided drone in action. All right, we're on a mission. What's the scenario? We're really very fortunate to have on our campus our very own abandoned chemical laboratory, possibly containing lots of noxious stuff that we would like to check out without sending a person in there. And that's why we're going to send an autonomous drone in there. That's the idea. Okay. We're going to tell it to go up, find a second floor opening, fly into the building, check it out. There's going to be no one with a joystick controlling it. There's no pilot. No, it'll just do its thing. While exploring buildings, the drone records data. As it moves through the building, it's actually trying to build a three-dimensional map of everything it sees. It looks like there's a door right there. OK, it's yeah. going into a room. Uh-huh. It's trying its best to get to these places. If it can't, it'll uh, abort and figure out something else. We can record information from a plethora of different kinds of, of sensors, so not just uh, cameras or range cameras, but we could also imagine having chemical sensors on here or temperature sensors. Once it's done its mission, we can actually access that data. The dean of UPenn's engineering school explained to us use cases for this type of technology. For example, if you're trying to rescue a hostage and you don't know where the enemy fire is coming from, wouldn't you rather go in knowing where everybody is? I imagine there are terrorists who would love to have this yes. technology. Does that worry you? Keeps me awake at night. How challenging do you think it will be for people with ill intent to get their hands on autonomous technologies for drones? The barrier to entry in this area is falling. So they could replicate what you're doing? Yes, it is doable. Unlike, for example, uh, learning how to build a nuclear weapon, uh, here there is no equivalent of the plutonium. You could buy everything uh, off the shelf or in software repositories. While the drones UPenn showed us are weaponless, the Belarusian army has demoed a drone with a grenade launcher. A Chinese company uses one with a flamethrower. The idea of a bomb being strapped onto a drone, the potential for that is depicted in this advocacy group's fictional video. The United Nations is considering an international ban on fully autonomous weapon systems. Dozens of countries have signed on. U.S. hasn't signed on to any of those agreements. Nope. Russia, China, and the U.S. have not signed on on any agreements yet until they know exactly what the parameter is. What's our hesitation? Uh, autonomy is a good thing. You're taking humans out of danger. Work, who served under the Obama and Trump administrations, estimates the U.S. military is spending around $12 billion a year on the development of autonomous technologies. What you're telling me is that we are moving to a place where the robot is actually pulling the trigger. In certain instances, yes. I want to always have a human say, this is the target you will go after. Now, it can go after totally autonomously, Jason, once you've designated the target. What about saying, here's the face of the person, go find that person and kill? Now you're getting into areas where it really starts to get sporty. Sporty? It's sporty. In a democracy, we're going to set legal, ethical, and moral boundaries on AI that an authoritarian regime might not. So I can easily imagine an authoritarian regime doing exactly what you just described. So I don't want to self-restrain ourselves. I want to be able to do all the research and development that we possibly can, make the decisions of how far we want to go but I want to keep my eye on our competitors because they might use it in ways that we find to be very troubling. 